Hi, I'm Judy Mudd, and this is my art tip on creating atmospheric landscapes uh, with fog. And uh, I often teach workshops on atmospheric landscapes, and during the, the uh, workshop I talk about the difference between painting a landscape and an atmospheric landscape. Uh, and a, it's more than just painting trees and grass and sky. It's actually adding those elements um, that creates uh, atmosphere with um, maybe an emotional feel to it or, um, you know, you actually can feel being there because of the atmosphere that's, that's in the scene. Um, you, a lot of times it's not just what was there, but maybe what you wish had been there, um, the feeling that you want there. Often our photos that we take, I'm an amateur photographer, I basically just take photographs to work as reference material for paintings. Uh, but I rarely am able to get the, uh, in, in, in any photography, either with a camera um, or with a, you know iPhone or whatever you're using to take a photo with, rarely are you going to be able to pick up all of the atmosphere that you're actually viewing when you're there on site. Uh, you can see this one. This one was taken up at the Blue Ridge Mountain area after a rain. Uh, and if, you know, if you're familiar with the Smoky Mountain area, uh, you know that it's known for its, you know, the actual look of smoke. Um, so a lot of fog is up there, a lot of low-lying clouds. Um, but it's rarely that you can pick it up. There was a lot more there than what is viewed on this, on this uh, photograph that I've taken. When I teach people to about uh, atmospheric landscapes, I suggest that they take a, and keep a journal with you. Um, make notes of the various atmospheres that you see, and um, you know you can take a like you said a quick photo with your your phone or or with a camera that you might be carrying. But it really won't won't pick up everything that you need to know about what is present in an atmosphere. Uh, but when you see it, make note of it. Look at the edges of you know what it does to edges, what that atmosphere does to the values, you know how light and how dark they are. Look and see what effect it has on the colors that are present. Uh, so look and look for things that are not typical. You know, you know we can see fog and we can see rain and haze, uh, but also look for things like smoke. Uh, maybe a city scene has a car exhaust or maybe uh, restaurant grills. There's a lot of of atmospheric elements that we don't think as being a typical. When uh, you begin painting, um, then you know des decide how you want the, the painting to be recreated and the properties of the atmosphere that you're wanting to paint and put into it. Now again, this is a much less um, atmospheric than it actually was in sight. Uh, regarding edges and values, uh, rain, th think of it in this way, uh, rain, fog, mist, you always think of soft edges, maybe lighter values because they're toned down by the, the uh, color of the, the clouds, um, and some muted colors, the colors aren't nearly as brilliant as they would be, say, on a sunny day. On a sunny day, you're thinking of harder edges and stronger values, and mostly colors are stronger also. Yeah, they can be stronger. So let's, let me show you this quick demo on how, how do you get this. You know, once you know what, you, what the edges are and the values are and the colors are, then how do you do it in watercolor? How do you get that? You, know, you can't just pick up like an oil paint and just paint it on there with white paint. We, we use the white of our paper and so we have to actually create that. And it, it can be a combination of lighter color paint but also, it could be a, com a, a thing of lifting uh, re uh, required, and it could be both, and most often, most often it is both. So let me just show you this back, how I would start this. Now, the sky that's here is pretty uh, white, so I could actually leave this as the white of the paper, but I think what I'll do is uh, add just a little bit of color, and I'm wetting this right down to this harder edge here. So I'm wetting it all the way down here. So if there's anything back there, and there's really not, not a whole lot there, I want it to merge. I want it to merge into the sky. And I'm just doing layer by layer. I'm going to do the, the, the hill that is the furthest away.
because it's going to have the softest colors and the softest look than the one in front of it. So it's a gradual ringing up as it comes closer to you. So this is probably wet enough. I'm just going to tone that sky just a little bit. I'm going to put just a little light coating of cerulean blue up there, just so you can see it. It's just almost non-existent. could probably have gone and not even put it in. But I'd like you to have that little bit of color back there. Just a little bit more. And as we come over here to this hill, Okay, that's pretty, whoop, that's pretty covered right through there. And the, the moisture is all the way down to here now. I just put the sky color up there. Okay, so now this, these, this hill that's here, you can see that in this case, there are almost streaks of fogginess in here. Uh, it, it's, it's, light, it's toned light up here, but then there's heavier fog that's lying in between a little bit of valleys in there. So I'm gonna put a combination of colors uh, and you can see that just you can just barely see the edge how it merges into the into the sky. So I'm just laying in color. Uh, right now this is ultramarine blue. It doesn't really matter what it is. It's it's because it's, like I said, it's going to be a combination of laying it in and and taking it out. I'll put a little burnt sienna in there. All of these colors are muted. Of course, I'm on a wet surface, and so the it's really going to dry much lighter than what it is right now. And this is where you you play with it a little bit. You you put it in, you lift it out, you put it in, you lift it out until it's dry and then then you'll have the effect that you want. Let's go ahead and fill this in over here. There's a tree shape here that I'm trying to leave out. Uh, it's actually in this next layer coming forward, and I, I want to leave a space for that because it is a has a more yellow in it. Okay, so that's that's some of it right there. And let's see what else can we put in. I'm gonna put just a little bit of other colors. Here's some sap green. You see how soft that edge is at the top. As it dries, you're going to start seeing a little bit more. We'll probably add a little bit more to it. It really needs to go darker because I am going to be lifting, and it is going to be drying. And I want it to be have a have a gray look to it. I don't want it to be this little perfect looking bright color. I'm putting a little bit of orange into to that blue. Remember, it's the complement, so it's toning that blue back a little bit. Let's put this other color blue in here. This is phthalo blue. Now as it dries, I'm going to try to put some of these little trees up in here. They're there, but they're not there. You know, you see them, and they do have a shape, but they're not well defined because they're hidden by the fog. Okay, so we have all this color in here. Let's put a little deeper down here in this little valley area because I'm going to lift that out too. Okay, so we have this hillside back here, but it doesn't look foggy enough. So we're, this, this is Kleenex, it's not regular tissue. So I'm going to play with this. I'm going to lift back some of these foggy areas. The tissue's nice and set. I usually use Viva uh, towels for lifting because they're softer and they're most like cotton. But uh, these are even softer, and they have much smaller little crevices and things that you can pick out some things with it. Now you can see it start to go back. I don't want too many hard edges in here. That tree's got to go in, but it's got to be... Okay, so that's pretty good. I want to add more color, though maybe some of these areas that are just like in here that are just kind of darkened just a little bit but that 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 uh 
far heel has to just be a background. We don't want it to be any more than that because we're going to put this nice strong barn up front and having a soft background uh, to have this very sharp edged barn up against is really going to be beautiful. Alright, let's lift some more. There's these little streaks of fog that just kind of work their way through the painting. Now this is starting to dry up here. And so if I want to create some really low lines and fog in there. If I want to create a few just subtle hard edges like what I'm seeing over here. Now's the time I'm going to do it. I'll add just a few little subtle. Let's put some things in there. They're still not. They're still very muted as far as color goes, and the value, the value is still very muted. Again, you lift back a few areas. You want it to be there, but not overpower that area. And we definitely don't want it to be a distraction. We just want it to be suggested. A few little edges where this meets the skyline. but soft. It's like a tree just peeking up through the fog. Like something like that. Not too much. I always use my finger a lot too to saw if, if you have too hard of an edge, the side of your finger really works well. You just have to make sure that you, you um, don't put color where you don't want to because it's still on your hand. But There's a few things peeking through. I'm trying to make this little bit of fog stand out. Just a little bit more. that. And again, it's, it's just playing with it, lifting, adding more color, lifting, adding more color, until you like what you see. All, all while you're thinking, you know, soft edge, muted color, <clears throat> light and value. Let's make this little bit of fog stand out by putting an edge to it. And it's, it's a very subtle thing. It's not a strong, hard thing to paint. You just want it to be just a very subtle change in values. There you go. That looks rather foggy. You don't want anything to look like it's too straight of a line. So, And you can still add water if you want to add some water to some of these. Um, It'll soften some of them too. So just plain, clean water will soften out some of those edges and make look make it look like there's fog rolling in. Now the next layer that I would do would be just a little bit stronger in color than this layer, and um, and gradually get stronger and stronger as you come forward. And look at the, the edges on this foreground. These trees are very obvious. So your edges are going to be sharper, uh, and uh, colors are going to be brighter, and the edges, you know, like I said, the edges are going to be um, more sharp. So, and, and versus, say, something like this in the background. Okay, I hope that explains how to do fog in watercolor a little bit for you.